Hey there everybody, Sage here and uh, I was at the whiteboard today shooting some videos for my online program and um, you know we've been uh, doing some uh, content this week on the respiratory system and uh, you know one of the, the landmates out here had uh, has came down with a respiratory tract infection um, ironically enough and um, so I was thinking today about respiratory formulas and thought I'd just shoot a little a quick little video here kind of demonstrating um, how I tend to think through formulas and just kind of put up uh, a metaphorical uh, respiratory system formula so um, so one of the ways that I primarily think through creating a formula is first off I'm thinking about what herbal actions do I want so maybe I'll write some of these down so I'm thinking about what herbal actions do I want right I'm, I'm thinking about what organ affinity do I want oh, sorry my pen's not doing so great actions affinity so what organ do I want or well, what type of herbal actions do I want and then what do I want generally the net energetics to be so by energetics that would be hot cold wet dry stimulating relaxing or tonifying so in general those are the three things that I'm thinking of when I'm putting together a formula and of course to get to that information um, you got to um, well essentially ask really good questions um, to your client or to your patient um, so that you can determine um, what different types of actions uh, energetics and affinities that you need now for a respiratory formula of course we're primarily going for the expectorant action is going to be our major um, herbal action that encompasses the lungs and the respiratory system and of course our affinity would be our lungs and our respiratory system now that's primary um, I think it's good when someone's sick um, to look at what other kind of secondary actions that you might want so say someone has uh, someone's say someone has kind of a mixed wet and dry cough and um, and it tends to be kind of spasmodic and tense um, but they have like lymphatic swelling maybe their lymph nodes in their neck are swollen well you might think about choosing some remedies in your formula that have a lymphagog action and obviously an affinity for the lymphatic system right um, in that sense you want to think of probably draining uh, excess damp accumulation and stimulating uh, the lymphatic system and the circulation of blood to help keep those fluids moving um, throughout the system better so I just thought I would put together kind of a mock little formula here for you um, that I think of as being a good um, a good all-around upper respiratory tract infection formula it's pretty general relatively balanced in terms of its humoral energetics um, so I always like to start a formula off with some OSHA root um, which would be Legusticum species now most people will use Legusticum porteri um, I I personally use different species of OSHA that grow more local um, to where I live um, they're also less endangered so that would be like Legusticum canbii or Legusticum grayi um, are great species there to work with um, then I like uh, OSHA has a cousin named Lamatium this is a pretty strong pear so lamatium dissectum so I think of in terms of um, with herbs I think in terms of like pears and triplets so com combining herbs in um, taking like a single herb and then you add a second herb to that and thinking how that's going to shift it thinking of the net actions adding a third herb to balance the energetics the humoral qualities add an additional sub herbal action that would be necessary etc so I like OSHA and Lamatium because OSHA tends to do kind of upper respiratory and Lamatium tends to get deeper respiratory both are very aromatic and resinous and pungent both are warming remedies um, in the sense that they're warming they tend to be drying um, but what we see with OSHA and Lamatium is that they're very resinous 
and those balsams and those resins kind of have a coating effect um, on the mucosal membranes and therefore can in some cases be good for, for dry situations, but for the most part they're so warming, I tend to like them predominantly for a wet cough. So here we see this would be best for a good base for a wet cough formula. Um, and um, and because of its warming quality and we've got upper respiratory and lower respiratory so that would be a good base pair OSHA and Lamatium for a pretty solid respiratory formula to that um, if I wanted to balance out the humoral energetics a little bit I would add a little bit of mullein leaf which is verbascum thapsus now verbascum thapsus so I find, in my experience with mullein, is a moistening remedy. Um, some people talk about it being a drying remedy. Um, it's hard to say. I get a little confused because in my experience, I've used mullein consistently for years for a dry cough and seen it work really, really well. Um, so I, I'm in the boat of mullein is um, a good remedy for a dry cough, especially for coughs that are so hard. People tend to get soreness in the chest, in the rib cage, in the solar plexus to the point of coughing ribs out of place. Um, so those kind of dry, hacking, hard coughs. Now say, we have someone um, with a respiratory tract infection with lymphatic swelling under the uh, armpits and in the neck. The mullein's going to be really great there because it's in the Scrofularaceae family, um, which is a family full of lymphatic remedies, and mullein has a lymphagog action. If we wanted to, to, to double that, we could add some red clover to the mix. Trifolium. Pratens would be uh, red clover. I do like to always use Latin names uh, because they're important. So, so here you have uh, a warming, drying pair. Here you have a relatively neutral but primarily moistening pair and a lymphatic pair. But all of these are expectorant. So we've got a nice four-part expectorant formula, two herbs of which are moistening and, and decongestant to the lymphatic system, two of which are warming, resinous, aromatic, pungent, and in that sense, more on the drying side um, energetically. So now say this person, maybe they, have a, maybe they have a fever going along with it. So we could think of adding a diaphoretic remedy to the formula here. Um, and ideally, we would choose a diaphoretic that also has a... Um, that also has an expectorant property. So for that, I would choose pleurisy root, which is Asclepius tuberosa. And pleurisy root is uh, I'm a great specific remedy for coughs that are hot and dry up above and uh, cold and moist down below, but it's one of our best relaxant diaphoretics. So this would be good um, when the fever is uh, hot and the person is tense and irritable and um, kind of in the high high peaking phase of a fever that pleurisy root would be really excellent there um, so here we have a nice five part formula that has four uh, five expectorants two of which are lymphatics one of which is a relaxant diaphoretic as well so here we're starting to see a picture of respiratory infection with cough lymphatic swelling and congestion along with a fever now if we look at this formula, I would say in general, this formula is a little bit harsh. Um, OSHA and Lamatium are pretty strong herbs. Mullein and red clover are a little bit more mild. Pleurisy is kind of in between. Um, but this is not going to be a very tasty formula. Um, it's also kind of, it's a little bit harsh. So I would want to kind of mellow this formula out a little bit. I would like to see it have a little bit more of a moistening, soothing property for the lungs. So I would want to put in um, a bit of licorice root. And that is glyceriza. 
Glabra. You'll have to pardon my handwriting. My mind goes faster than my hand does. Uh, so my handwriting's classically very hard to read. But some licorice root in there, that's gonna bring a demulcent property to the formula. It's gonna help reduce the inflammation. It's also a great expectorant. Um, and it's moistening, as I said, um, and it's kind of pretty neutral as far as hot and cold because it is so strong anti-inflammatory. Um, I would say it's going to lean more on the cooling side. Uh, lastly here, the last herb that I would want to add to this, I just love adding this herb to every respiratory formula, um, just in a very small amount because it's so relaxant. Um, and what we see here is this is a pretty good general um, strong expectorant formula, um, but I would like to see it kind of relax the bronchioles a little bit more. OSHA does that, uh, pleurisy does that, but I'd like to really see a good relaxing um, effect on the bronchioles. You know, a lot of times when people have a respiratory infection, they're coughing and coughing and coughing and they can't stop coughing. Um, the mucosal membranes are very irritated and need to be soothed. Um, but the bronchioles, the smooth muscle around the bronchioles constricting. So we want to relax those bronchial muscles so that people can kind of like take that deep breath and relax and, and ideally get some sleep too. So for that, I would add our classic Lobelia, which is Lobelia inflata, inflata. One, our best relaxant expectorant remedy, and it's also a very good relaxant diaphoretic. So here we see the kind of breakdown of the formula here. We see that we have a relaxant diaphoretic pair. We have a lymphatic pair that's more moistening expectorants. We have a resinous aromatic pungent warming drying expectorant pair. And then we have um, a demulcent here with licorice and another demulcent with red clover, though licorice is quite a bit stronger. And then we have uh, two good relaxant expectorants. So we have stimulant expectorant, relaxant expectorant, moistening expectorant, and uh, demulcents there, and all around a pretty good, well-rounded expectorant formula. So of course, next and lastly, we have um, how what the parts are, what the ratios are. Now for me, I tend to not work in parts. I don't like parts. I like percentage. Um, it's just the way my mind is put together. So seeing those layers of the formula is typically how I will think through um, my parts and or percentages. So with a formula like this, I'm just uh, also, uh, so you know, I'm making this up as I go along here. This, I didn't script this out or anything. So I, you know, I would say if it's predominantly, uh, I will say it's predominantly a wet cough, I'm gonna probably want a little bit higher amounts of the OSHA and the Lamatium. So we'll go ahead and do 20% each of those. Licorice and Lobelia are pretty strong, so I know I'm going to do Lobelia at 5%, Licorice at 5%, so that leaves me 50% more. Um, so I would want to do, let's see, um, let's, let's bump these up to 25%, make these a little bit stronger, so we have 25, 60%, um, and we can do 15 of mullein, 15 of red clover, and 10 of pleurisy root. That'd be 25, uh, would be 50, 80, 90, 100%. So there's our formula. We see it's based on a base pair of Osha and Lamatium. It's got these supportive uh, remedies for mullein and red clover for the lymphatic congestion and swelling. The pleurisy root and lobelia um, would be helpful to support the fever licorice kind of balancing out harmonizing the formula making it a little less harsh a little bit more palatable and uh, pleurisy and lobelia also relaxing the bronchioles and ultimately i would do this formula as a tincture primarily because it would taste pretty horrible as a as a tea 
but you also see that you've got um, one, two, three, four roots, and then one, two, three leaves or flowers. So in order to prepare this as a tea, you'd have to do part of it decoction, part of it infusion. Most people just aren't able to do that. Um, one thing I would say about this formula, the pleurisy and lobelia um, are pretty low, so if the person really had a fever going, I would probably want to give them our classic three-part fever formula used in Western herbalism, which is peppermint, um, elderflower, not elderberry, but the flowers, and yarrow flowers. That is our classic three-part um, fever diaphoretic formula there. So I'd probably give some of that diaphoretic tea, um, a respiratory formula like that, and then tell them to sleep for three or four days straight, not getting out of bed, drinking lots of water, drinking broth, and, um, and that is a ticket there to getting better. So I just wanted to share a little respiratory formula. It's been respiratory week here at the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, and uh, it's been on my mind, so I just thought I'd shoot a quick little video and uh, share with you a formula. What respiratory formulas do you like? I'd love to hear if you've put together any formulas of your own, if you've ever um, used a commercial formula for the lungs that you really like, any different types of preparations that you love, post those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll respond to as many comments as I can myself. And uh, if you're watching this anywhere but my blog, head on over there. That's where all the free stuff is at. Lots more videos um, over there at evolutionaryherbalism.com. So thanks so much everyone for checking it out. Have a great rest of your day and uh, take care and be well.